This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. The trigger! Oh! Puts it in the air. Aiden Fred wins the hole. It's still with Lee Gregory. He's in the box. Tries to screw it. Is it going to be there? Yeah. Oh my God! Hello, good evening and welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Week. Uh, yes, Sheffield Wednesday are still sat in 23rd position. Uh, we're still a couple of points off survival. It's still all happening. We're still live. It's gripped. It's sorted. Let's off-road. Tonight, joining me, I've got Holly. I've got Stevie. Now, uh, because we're short of a few weekers this week with John and Ash on holiday, uh, Charlie's treading the boards, I believe, and uh, Blair is still in the doghouse. Tonight, joining us, I've got Terry, Terry from <laughs> Owls Online. Thanks a lot for joining us, Terry. How's it going, pal? You all right? All good, buddy. How are you? Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. Pray for, pray for my brother, Blair. Uh, so, right, this so listen, we've got two games to get through tonight. We've got uh, Swansea and Middlesbrough, a couple of... Um, well, forgettable games. Uh, I, I, I don't know where, where to really start on that. Uh, man in the comments tonight, uh, the glamorous assistant this evening is going to be Stevie. So uh, get involved, you know, get the comments in. Let's let's uh, let's see if we can generate some talking points because I'll not lie to you, this is going to be a difficult slog. So, uh, Ollie, I'll, Holly, Holly, I will come to you first. Uh, did Pop World in Biddlesbury get an absolute kick in last night? I may have peaked too soon. <laughs> <laughs> One o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I might have peaked too soon, unfortunately. So uh, even after messaging him to check and and then atting him online and uh, and telling him off about not being open on a Monday and then then confirming that they were open on a Monday, you didn't you didn't make it. No, no, I didn't know. <laughs> I was so enthusiastic. So, so this explains I because I, I, I've jumped on X and I, I was up early this morning and went out, headed out to the gym and I, I'm checking my feed as I'm, as I'm going. And it was like half six, seven this morning. And um, Holly posted at like 6 a.m. And I was like, bloody hell, she's been out all night. <laughs> and we started yeah. drinking yesterday. At she, she got in the car yesterday. Blair drove me, my mate, and Holly up, and she got in the car with gin, Copperberg, some kind of liqueur, something else at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Yeah, peak too soon. Opera. And this is how you know you've had too many <laughs> egg bombs when you're up already for the train at five o'clock. I could have run a marathon this morning at five o'clock. I could have done anything. Because <laughs> you had a good 12, <laughs> you had a good 12 hours in bed. Is that, is that <laughs> There was Brilliant. people at the train station that were chatting about football to me. It must have been like, what What the hell is she on? But Min. I've had a nice long nap now. I'm okay. <laughs> You've had a, you've had a good you've had a good sleep, right? Then, so anyway, let's let's get into it. Terry, I'll come to you first. Listen, you know uh, we played Swansea. And, uh, you know, before we get into the lineup at Et Al, you know, what were your preconceptions of this game? It was this something winnable for us? Did you think? I think it had to be. I mean, we've we'd had a couple of games. Obviously, that Ipswich game is just well ridiculous. But when we got stuffed at Huddersfield, we bounced back pretty sharpish, um, mm -hmm. and then went on that pretty good run well certainly for us anyway uh and so I, I expected us to bounce back a little bit um and then when the team news came out it was just a little bit oh okay uh, maybe it'll not quite be swashbuckling football but i, I trust the manager so i'm confident uh, but not overly so because you can't be when you're next to the bottom yeah yeah, there's, there's never ever any confidence sitting in at any point, is there? Uh, Stevie, you know, I, looking at the lineup here, if I get into the lineup, if I get it on screen now, you know, we've got um, Beadle, Diaby, Hekwe, Fameiwo, Valentin, Volks, Palmer, Johnson, Ugbo, Kadamashu, and Masaba. Now, Holly's been quite vocal about Masaba and um, Gassama playing on the pitch at the same time, which happened later on in this game. Um, I'm, I assume we'll get to that at some point. But for me, there is a big gaping hole there in the fact that uh, 
we've only got two midfielders. And I assume when we get onto the Borough game, can Volks and Bannon hold the central midfield? Just those two is, is obviously a question to ask. But was there any glaring omissions from there? Valentina Johnson playing down the wing backs? You know, I, what, what else would you have done? Um, I don't think he could have done much else, to be fair, based on form. You could have tossed a coin. I know you, you just sort of referenced the Masaba Gasama sort of uh, dynamic there, and it's one or the other uh, at the moment based on that. I, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, the, the general consensus seemed to be that that was going to be the way that we'd set up, and I, it, Ugbo definitely did tend to sort of drift off to the right a little bit with Kadamari down the middle. Um, but from a, from a starting 11 point of view, um, Bernard was going to start, wasn't he? Uh, and then pulled up in the warm up by all accounts, and um, that that's put DRB in. DRB has been fasting, so you know we'll come on to that. He's, he's I, I thought he put a shift in on Friday and did really well for for, for what it was. Um, I, I, in terms of the two in midfield, I think it, it, it's almost that two with another two that will sit in front, and then you have got the wing backs. So it's a it's a bit mm -hmm. of a fluid diet, uh, formation, isn't it? Um, so I didn't really worry about the way that we'd set up there. Um, looking at the bench, and certainly looking with hindsight in terms of one or two players that came on, um, I don't think we could argue with that starting eleven saying it was probably the strongest that we got, give or take Masada over Gasama. Holly, there's been a lot of times uh, over a, a lot of different managers where they've each tried to play four at the back and it's always ended up kicking us in the ass. And everybody, you know, for the last four or five years now, even bang, back in the monk trumpet days there was a point where they you know we tried four at the back and then we've gone oh god and everybody always seems to come back to this wing back five at the back three in the middle one an advanced midfielder and then and then a striker but rules really doing his best to try and make sure we've got this attacking front three in there are, are, are we are we are we leaving the central midfield a little exposed by insisting on that front three well, I think the difference is when we've got possession and when we haven't got possession, it's the two completely different setups, aren't they? So obviously them three aren't, which we will we'll get onto this in the Middlesbrough game, but they're not supposed to just stand up front and wait for it when we haven't got the ball. This, the wing backs are part of the attack when we're attacking and we've got the ball and then they're part of the defence when we aren't. And that's the same for the, everybody. I think they're supposed to change the plan depending on whether we're in possession or not. I think in this game particularly, Bernard was such a big loss. And then when it's that close to kickoff, you probably wouldn't play that back three as it is. But if you have no choice and it's that close to kickoff, you're just going to have to throw someone in, aren't you? Somebody said mm -hmm. that Bernard and Bannon have played in something like eight or nine of his wins. So both of them didn't start. It's just simple maths, isn't it, Terry? I think it's... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Just that easy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, the thing is, though, about that is, I, I think while it, while we may be a little bit down on, on it, because obviously we're talking after the game, um, and I, obviously I were at the start, it didn't, it didn't come across as particularly an attacking lineup. We all, Regardless of what you think of Barry Bannon, we're a worse off team without him, because we don't create mm -hmm. nowhere near as much. But what you were saying, Dan, mm -hmm. about you know the two in midfield, I think we've we'd, we've always struggled with it. Certainly this year, we've really struggled. And as much as Will Vokes, I have a lot of time from him, in, and he's a good player. Make no bones about it. But but him in a two doesn't work. I just don't, you know, I just I don't know. There's just something I don't think with the players we've got, it just doesn't feel like we can play with a central two. We just we we, we get cut open far too much. Um, yeah, and and that. That just worries me. It has done for months, to be honest, just playing the, whoever it is in a two. I think Volks yeah, as well, like he breaks up the play, but then you need someone to then, like if he blocks an intercept or whatever, someone else needs to then get the ball and play it out in, and that you're relying on whoever the other person is to do all of that. If he's going to break up the play, they have to do all of it, which is a mm -hmm. two, it doesn't really work. Well, we've got a comment there, Holly. Uh, you know, this is where we miss buyers. Now, you know, bias played well in our League One promotion season, but are, are we getting benchitis a little bit? Because it's it's very easy to, when, when we've had two really dour games like we have done. Um, 
to sort of get benchitis and just sort of say, well, you know, they'd have done better there, they'd have done better there. But but you know, Steve, going back to what Terry was saying there, there is a there is an element of because of Bannon's attacking prowess and dare I say lack of defensive prowess. And I'd, I'd, I'd even argue the same with Marvin Johnson. I'm pretty sure he did an interview a couple of weeks ago, sort of saying he's really good at, uh, you know, he's really good at going forward. But in terms of doing the defending, he's more of a nuisance than a than an effective defender. Are we kind of playing five at the back, and we want to play three in midfield in order to kind of, oh, I'm going to say the word, carry these players? I think. I think it's that was some it, genuine analysis there, wasn't it? That was some, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm, I'm, you all, I'm it? <laughs> I think I think the thing is to to sort of bring it back to 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 sort of the genesis of the conversation. It, I, I, I agree to an extent that the two has at times been a little bit of a, a, an issue, but I think when it has worked, it's worked really well. And you know the wins that we've had, that that midfield dynamic has allowed the. You know the the the, the wing backs to go and push on. It's allowed those two either side of a pivot through the middle in in the front three to 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 sort of go and be a little bit more expansive. And I'm referencing the whole game where it, 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 everything seemed to click um, to to the point where you know it shows that that formation and that sort of that setup does work. I think the biggest problem that we've got is that we're talking about having a two or a three, but who who would be the third person? Because at the moment we're, we're we're talking Volks, we're talking Bannon, we're talking Palmer is probably third. Um, Perveda was injured. Um, yep. You know, we, Bannon we was on his way back. Ba Bannon we, we wasn't right. If we put if we on Saturday or or whatever, then go right. We're going to put Palmer in with Volks and Bannon. Somebody's going to moan about Palmer playing in there. Um, so yep. it, be, it becomes a bit of a becomes a bit of a I don't want to say a non-argument. It becomes a bit of an issue though, doesn't it? Because the way that we're setting up is the squarest pegs in the squarest holes at times. It reminds I think me the biggest issue that you've that got... Game, I think the thing is, you mentioned Pervera, Stevie, and I think he's, as much as we, you know, he, he is that player that's got people off the seat in the last few weeks, um, you know, prior to his getting injured. And when even when we have played a two, when he's in, he carries the ball so far and attracts players mm. to him. So when we've got the ball, mm. even if we're not playing it like wide to him, he'll come inside and pick the ball up and run 30 yard with it and take the pressure off. And at the minute, well, certainly, you know, Swansea game, it, you know, once, if, if you've not got Bannon around, you've not got him around, yes, Gassama and Saba can carry the ball, but they're still learning. I think that's fair to say. Um, when you get it back, it's almost like, well, are we going to do anything with it? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, just felt a little bit too, not negative, um, but certainly, you know, not as not as impulsive, not as you know, we, we we react to things rather than making things happen when he's not in the team. Yeah, I'd agree, listen, I'd agree with that. And um, if you, I don't forgive me, I've not I've not spoken to Dan. I, I'm not. I'm assuming you haven't got the stats for Swansea, have you? Or have Hold you as a graphic? Baller. Yeah, buddy. So if you look at. <laughs> If you look at the stats that we've got there, you look at it as a 31% possession. Um, but if you look at the shots on target, if you look at the, the actual shots that we have, the, you know, the corners are negligible. People would look at that on paper and sort of go, we've been at Amadir. You know, Swansea have had all mm -hmm. the possession. They've had, had territory. I actually think that we we, we set up and rule set up with a game plan on on um, on Friday, on Good Friday, uh, to, to neutralise Swansea a little bit. And I get what Terry's saying in terms of not being progressive in terms of uh, you know having that fluidity going forward from somebody that can carry the ball into the you know through the thirds or almost i think he's actually gone in there and said right we've got a definitive game plan here to say right we're going to break up the way that they play because they did out passes they did set up but i actually think that the way that we set ourselves up um was really good and i thought you know we we, we were we were valued for being one nil up and without going too far in front. I think it's a disappointment that we dropped two points on Friday based on the performance that we put in, the chances that we had, um, and you know, the 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 out and out chances that we had and the fact that we were winning one nil for so long. Yeah, you did right. There's there's an element of those stats there that can suggest that the reason that the uh possession stats were skewed somewhat uh is because they went on a flourish for the final ten minutes to win. They didn't. 
they did have most no. of the ball a lot of the time. And it, so, it also could be argued that, let's say, we just started raining shots in for the last 10 minutes to try and get those um, those 14 shots on goal. We didn't. We did have more shots in them. And, I, and I'll even argue that we deserve to win it, given the sitters that we absolutely missed. Um, mm. the, the issue is, is that when you give away that much of the ball, Holly, you can't be expected to... You know, to, to 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 come back, but do you feel like we've been, we've set up these last two games in order to play counter attacking football? Um, I don't know because I think in some of the games we've been really naive and we thought, oh well, we'll we'll just attack them and we'll and we'll keep the ball up the other end and that'll work out and it, and it obviously hasn't particularly in that Ipswich game, but in loads of different games, so. Part of me thought, well, maybe rules learn a little bit of. I mean, Cisco didn't do this either, but a little bit of a more experienced manager's tactic of at least just try and park a van. Maybe not park a bus, but park a van and <laughs> try park, and just limit. Park what's Van Bode <laughs> And maybe he's learned, but. And then try and catch him on, on the counter attack, I guess, but. <laughs> you don't and the know. thing is, no, I mean the thing is, I mean, I, I, as much as uh, you make some good points, both you, Stevie Holly, I, and I know, I, I get what you're saying, and I'm not being negative on it. I mean, I do agree with. I think that was the plan to let them have more of the ball because I, I don't think like, we've we've seen it earlier this season as well, um, where we had Cameron Dawson holding onto the ball for ages, and you've got people screaming and shouting, "Get rid of it! Get rid of it! Get rid of it!" And then he's hold the hold, holds the ball. We then played in behind, and and I can't remember which game it was particularly, but I remember it happening a couple of games, and you can hear everybody screaming and moaning that we hold on to it, we're not playing it forward, and oh god, it's this playing out from the back that's going to cause us an issue. Yes, it has. I'm not saying we're brilliant at it all the time. It has caused us issues, um, but you can see when something keeps happening. But to me, anyway, it's quite obvious that that's the plan. They're not doing it because they can't attack. They're doing it because that's the plan. And that's I do plan. I do agree. Yeah, I do agree with that. I think it did work for the majority of the Swansea game. And I think if the the Ugbo shot that smashes the crossbar goes in, we're not having this conversation. We're having a completely different one that it's, it's we've set up really well. You know, we've done exactly what we set out to do. We've got in front. We've got to him. Because I think if we'd have scored that, then their heads would have gone, despite how much possession they had. Yeah, or the or the Masaba chance, or the Valentin, Valentin. chance, or the you know the you, they, yeah. myri myriad chances, myriad chances yeah. Friday night, weren't they? You know the, yeah, the game could have been done and dusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just looks bad when you when when you're winning, and then and then you end up drawing the game when you should have really won it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, I I I don't think on this show very much I've very rarely blamed the referee, Stevie, but there was a couple of questionable decisions in that one. One being their goal, because, you know what I mean, he did essentially mm. play volleyball with it. And there was a massive penalty shout for us as well uh, in, in, in that game. I mean, do you feel like, oh God, I'm going to say, on another day it could have gone our way? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, on another day, that's a penalty. Uh, with another team, it's a penalty. I'm not saying that there's a an agenda against Sheffield Wednesday. It just seems to be that um, we're not getting the rubber rubber the green at the moment. It's not going our way um, with those sort of decisions. But um, I thought it was a penalty. I, I, I think if we had VAR in the Championship, um, I think it would have gone our way as well. Um, we were very unfortunate. And again, to to the point, we've hit the bar. We've had a couple of shots that have gone gone wide. Um, it wasn't great to see that sort of decision go against us. And if you you sort of tally them up, it tends to be that way at the moment, doesn't it? It's almost like we've we've had the 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 playoff semi-final, the playoff final, we've got ourselves up coming from where we were. And it's almost like calm is coming around the other way now. And we're, we're, we're not getting the rub of the green with those 50-50s to sort of say, you know, those chances are falling down on our side. But yeah, I, I felt it was a penalty. Um, I think the handball was a difficult one. It was very... Very flash in the pan, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, I've, I've looked briefly back on the, the, the sort of the two minute highlights before we came on to chat tonight, and you can see Marv put his hand up and sort of say it's handball. At the time, I didn't know what the, the, the call was. Um, I'd had no qualms about it being handball. I had more sort of issue with the fact that we 
we we weren't defending. We we there was nowhere to nobody to be seen anywhere near the the, the guy that headed the ball and the the guy that slotted it in. To be honest with you, that was my main gripe. But um, more the penalty than the handball for me. Yeah, there's 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 an issue there with um you know with a few. I don't know. Some of the comments have just thrown me there. I'm just having to read there. One of them's absolutely sent me stupid. But I tell you what, Steve. Uh, the um, Stevie tonight has found the touch up appearance button, and I'm just staring into his beautiful brown eyes right now. And I tell you what, I uh, I'm, 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 you I'm, rat I'm all bastard. Hot. I'm all hot. I'm all hot under the collar now, Holly. Uh, <laughs> and, and another goal. Another goal for. Kadamatri, uh got got one under his belt. I'm going to switch into professionalism there. You see, I did that. I could be a newsreader. Uh, another goal for Kadamatri, straight, straight in on the back stick. Another really brave goal. You know, once he got that rich vein of form that he had a few, you know, a few weeks ago, he got a, a run in the team. And then, you know, he's a young kid, didn't really perform as well as what he would have liked. Then Ugbo started scoring goals. Uh, it's nice to see him back on the score sheet, isn't it? Yeah, after his international goal as well, he scored. Hooray. <laughs> but yeah, um, it is. I would have liked to have seen him continue that. <laughs> if I'm honest, and if he forgets all about Middlesbrough and he does it on Saturday, I'll be, I'll forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, then. All right, then, Terry. Let's. Uh, I tell you, what, let's let's get on to uh, let's get on to Middlesbrough because um, that's enough of that nonsense. I mean, I mean, let's be honest, right? It, it, it was one all. It was a game I believe we could and should have won. And I feel like I came away from that game feeling like we it, that was two points lost. However, given the possession statistics, I reckon that Swansea probably came away from that game thinking that was also two points lost because it's easy to put your uh, your respective coloured blinkers on, isn't it? But right, so I knew that going away to Middlesbrough Terry would be a, a difficult a difficult ask. I thought it'd be a big it would be a big scalp if we got anywhere near beating them. But just like the Swansea game, it really wasn't a classic, was it? No, I mean, it, as you say, it we're, it we're always going to be difficult. I mean, obviously, any team that's pushing to try and get in the playoffs and uh, in and around that are looking to get whatever it takes to get into that top six. And then you never know what happens, as we all we know from last year. But um, likewise, you'd expect that from us. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So going into it, while I won't... I'll be lying if I said I were confident I would get in a win, but I thought we'd get something because, as we'd already said in in the Swansea game, as much as you know, we can be, we can give away a lot of possession. Um, we can we can also you know do a bit on 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 you know we we can be quite positive in his own respect. So I expected something, um, which is more than what we got. I actually was confident going into this game. By the way, just going to let you know, and not because I I had lots to drink beforehand i've got some, i've got some middlesbrough fan friends and they were shitting it because their season they've already sort of classed the season as over and this we've had a little bit of a what you wagging your finger at you motherfucker i've got photographic evidence that tells me what your score prediction was so don't tell me you were confident no coming into i'll this tell game. you why so last right time no, 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 no. <laughs> before we go any further eight Actually, holly <laughs> higgins of this parish you tell people this is what <laughs> happened this parish. is what happened this is what happened holly stevie Stevie, can you just get me and my mates we're going to write the scores on these sheets this and we're going to hold answer. them up can you i'm not doing it can you hold them up well, can you take a photo while we hold them up? We're going to do this, like this, right? Like, eh. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> so we say... At... What did I you... didn't... I just put a star ah! on. I didn't say which way. <laughs> right. No. You, you did, though. You did. And what score did you predict, Holly? 2-0. <laughs> Sorry, can you say that a bit louder, Holly? 2-0, <laughs> <laughs> Stevie. Two, two, but I'll tell you who why. 2-2. Two, who two? I was going to say, because technically she weren't wrong. Technically. So, no, this is yeah. it. She 100%. No. So what I'm saying is she's sitting in and going, oh, I'm really confident going into game. No. <laughs> 10 minutes so before kickoff, time, we're going to lose 2-0. Last time I met those people, we predicted the scores and I predicted 2-0. And then we absolutely hammered them. So I thought, I can't change it now. I've got to stick to what I thought last time. But they weren't confident. They thought that we'd get some it because they had Housen at centre-half. He's about my height and he's about... Age. My age. 
my age. You can have, you can throw mine in there, Holly. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so they weren't confident. So... I'm not over it yet. Not over it. Not over it. I mean, you know, you I, I, I noticed that you were pre-drinking to drown your sorrows beforehand. I mean, you know what I mean? You're all you're already engaged to be disappointed on a on an away day, <laughs> which uh, which I quite enjoy the pre the pre-thinking. Also, Stevie, big fan of your Holly accent impression as well. Big, big huge fan of that. Uh, as was Mad Ward. Uh and uh we'll hope to see that more often because I'm, I'm trying to retire the Transiri voice. Um but now we've oh, got right, Holly's so, accent yeah. to take the piss out of. I feel like, you know, we've done uh, we've done really well. So, listen, Terry, let's actually, uh, while these two rag on each other, let's talk about some football. Um, the I was genuinely really disappointed with the way we conducted ourselves in that game. We, uh, you know, we didn't harry, we didn't push, we didn't, what's, what's the word that the kids use now? We didn't um, gamble, we didn't press. Uh, you know what I mean? It was just... It was just abject, wasn't it? I, I was genuine. That's the first time I've come away because I know that their confidence will be on their ass after the you know the first quarter of the season. But to still chuck in performances like that, knowing that what we were capable of, given some of the wins that we've had, I found that really. I I, I came away angry from that game. The, the annoying thing is, I think in the first 15, 20 minutes, I don't think we were bad at all. Um, you know, we've got that chance that when. Marv hits it across the keeper, and I think it clipped the bottom of the post. And and there were there were little signs that we might do something, um, but then, you know, five minutes after that, I think it, we were we were almost clinging on to the game from then on. And I just, as you said, Dan, I don't know, I don't know what happened. It it was almost like when when we hit that wide, that with that shot went any sense of belief, unity, anything we had, just went straight out of the window because from then on i don't know i mean you know we've we've got a team full of massive players that gets commented on every week bambo diaby whether you know stevie said earlier he had, he played well on friday and i thought he did all right mm -hmm. comparatively um against middlesbrough as well um and but yeah he doesn't impose himself <laughs> nowhere near enough you know we get all these corners with awful with set pieces absolutely shocking with them we have, you know, three, four players at six foot plus, and we managed to find the man at the near post more times than I care to even remember. It's just ridiculous, ridiculous. And then, as you said, it just it just fell to bits. It fell to bits. And, yeah, it, you know, we, we, we're still two points away from staying in this division with six games left to play. But at, at full time, it feels like we might as well be six points away with two games to play. You know, it might be. Yeah. You might as well flip it the other way around because that's how, that's what it felt like at, at full time. Yeah, it that did. Result it did. Is it, worse it, than that Ipswich one. That performance is worse than that Ipswich one because the Ipswich one, at least you could go, well, Ipswich were really good, but it doesn't even take a good team to beat what how we performed. Yeah. Yesterday, it was so bad. You just mentioned pressing. There was sort of pressing. There was sort of. Tootling towards them with no conviction. It weren't making their players tootling. Tootling. We didn't make them play the ball. We let them play the ball. We just we were running towards them. But if they'd have taken longer, we'd have just slowed the run down so you never actually get there. They were never gonna actually try and stop them. What's that comment say, H? It's this one. It said, it said to Mystic Holly at the game, we have three massive centre backs and never attack the ball at a set piece. But that, oh, is that, but is that it, wasn't, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just we never attack the ball, but we just ne everything that we did, we did we did with no conviction whatsoever. So it wasn't just us trying to attack corners, it was us defending corners, us pressing. Every single <clears> thing <throat> that we did was just completely lackluster. It was just like, like I say, there weren't. They were never going to actually intercept the ball because they were purposely avoiding it for some reason. It was, <laughs> it was you know, like it went in the game plan. It went in the game plan to be touching no, the ball, H. Yeah, that was it. it, it they were, it were just literally just rubbish. Now, Stevie, I don't uh, Can you just, uh, while I fill for 30 seconds, can you scroll mm -hmm. up those comment lists? There was one about the commentators um, from the Borough game. Now, I watched this on iFollow and, and obviously on the away games, they, um, they have uh, the 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 local uh, the local commentators, and it says, "Did you hear the commentators about as Middlesbrough game?" 
they they may as well have said this, <laughs> that we are shit ripped us to death, right? They they did. They, there was a point where they really tore into us. To and, and about five minutes later, the guy had to uh, had to kind of backtrack a little bit and sort of say, um, "Well, you know, I think it's a great club, and I think they're really good. But as they are right now, they're there for the taking." And it really did seem like that, Stevie. Like you know, I I, I don't know how many peanut butter shots you had because I know Blair were driving. But do you remember much from the game? Um, it was, a, I remember the game, it just, it, it, as much as it was, it was just very nondescript, wasn't it? It was, a mm -hmm. the, the performance was abject. Um, I, I agree to an extent with what Holly, um, and Terry have said, you know, I was more frustrated coming out of Monday yesterday than I was watching Ipswich than I was, I wouldn't say watching Huddersfield because I thought Huddersfield was a, a real low point. Um, but we're in a situation now where the you know if you, if you look on social media and you look at the comments that are coming under the the SWFC hashtag, we, we, we've got people that are coming out and sort of basically going, well, if you look at Plymouth, you look at Birmingham, you look at QPI, you look at all the other teams that are picking up points down there in and around it. Not Plymouth, forgive me. Um, you know these are these are teams that are scrapping for it. They're in for a fight. They're wanting to to do bits. They're digging in, and we just seem to. We almost bent over and grabbed his ankles yesterday, didn't we? It was, it, it was just that kind of performance. Um, it was really, really abject, really, really sort of out with a whimper. And the, the the goal went in, and I never really felt that there was anything coming the other way. I think if you, it, it had it had a sense of inevitability around yes, it, did it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that was it. It was it was right. We're, we're we're not here. And I think I think the managers come out afterwards and has gained. It's it's interesting. He's had, he's had a couple of people sort of saying we we well there you go. Um, and I'll leave that for you to read, but I'll just sort of segue into it. We we, we we've got people in on the internet that are sort of saying he's got to start carrying a little bit of the flat for it. But at the same time, there, mm -hmm. there are people saying he's, he can only work with what he's got. Um, he mm -hmm. seemed genuinely pissed off last night, and he's yeah. not been like that for for. for a very long time, if it's at all. He, he seemed, yeah, he seemed really irate. And my frustration is he's, I suspect that he's not had things go his way in January in terms of the the the, the, the playing personnel turnover, the transfer acquisitions that we've ended up getting. And I think he's done a really good job with the, the loans that we've got in and identifying certain players with hindsight. Ugbo's been an absolutely fantastic signing, as is Pavida. Um, these weren't players that we were looking at, you know, in terms of profile of player when when, when he came in in January. Um, but, you know, we, we brought Hendrick on yesterday. Do you know what I mean? We brought Hendrick I, on. I tell you we, what, when, when, I realized, the bench. when I realised when I realized that Hendrick, Hendrick was on was when he was taking a corner. I was like, who's that with the ponytail? Oh, my God, it's that guy. And then yeah. smashed it back. <laughs> it was one of the best corners I've seen all season. If we, if we had... If we had uh, Bambo number bloody five hitting that one, that which is what we should have been should have been doing, I you know we might we might have got something, but it was it was absolutely abject, and a lot of people agreeing with you in the comments, Stevie. There's a lot of people sort of saying like mm -hmm. like Rule was genuinely like angry about it. Now I'll I'll put the um I'll put what he said on the screen once oh, again. Um, he said uh, when you lose, you always look at things you could do differently as a manager, but I think since. <laughs> But I think since we arrived here, I've always tried to protect my players and I've always tried to take responsibility for a defeat. This is not just about tactical things. You have to have energy for such a game and such a situation. Everybody should know our situation. It's not enough to look for excuses. We have to deliver. Deliver. We didn't today. Just absolutely dug the players out. And I, and I feel like, Terry, I mean, is that something it, you believe is done? Like, try to protect the players and now he's thought, do you know what, Sodom? I think, I think he has to a degree, took responsibility for things for the, over the course of the season while he's while he's been in, good and bad. You know, he, he's admitted when he's had to change things because he's got things wrong and he's tweaked things and, you know, maybe we've picked the odd point up here and there because of, you know, he, he's made a mistake. Let's let's be honest about it. He's 34 and he's still learning as a manager. He's a young man, you know, and, and he's it's his first managerial job and I'm not, try, I'm not making excuses for him here. That's just a fact. He is still learning. Um, but I do think it comes to a point when I think, and and I, when he when he said what he did and mentioned about the fans as well, and he called the fans Premier League, but the player, the, the you know we aren't like the fans are, but we as in the group of players aren't. 
Um, I actually quite like it. Uh, you know, he has, as I said already, I think he has protected the players as much as he can um, without really, you know, prodding and poking. When we mentioned Dawson earlier, Dawson's had stick. He stood up for him. Um, you know, he, he has stuck up. But now, he's not wrong, is he? Let's be honest. As we've said, we've got six games left. They don't need telling that every game's a cup final, as we were told two games ago. You know, eight cup finals to go, as it were, before the Easter break. Now, I mean, you don't need telling. You don't need telling that the cup final's left. You look at the table. I mean, while we were saying earlier about the middles were commentators saying we're not fighting and there were comments about other teams getting results, you've only got to go back like four games and we'd won four out of five and everybody else weren't doing their bit and we were doing our bit. And that's why we've got within arm's reach now because we were doing our bit. And the biggest concern for me is the fact that we've gone into that run of form playing really well, dismantling teams, although not scoring loads, because we've scored, what, I don't know, what is it, about 31 goals, which is ridiculously low. But, you know, we've been good value for them wins that we got, to then all of a sudden falling off a cliff and not looking like we've played played with each other all season. It's like, it's like it, it, this last couple of games, not, well, sorry, yesterday's game, feels like we've got, 11 players plus the subs and just throwing them on the pitch and gone here have a knockabout lads because it didn't feel like they were they didn't know anything they didn't know each other that's what it felt like at the end they were a really i i thought but this might have just been because i were drunk and annoyed but i thought there were a really bad feeling amongst the players in the game like it were like the i don't know why but there were just a really really bad feeling amongst all the players and i mean like their their right back was luke Aylin. Right, everybody knows that Luke Aylin leaves a humongous gap for you to run into. Every single team does that against him every single game. Did you see Marvin or either of the wingers that played against that side? Did you see any of them run at him? But then, no. Did, did Paul and Marv not commit because they knew they they weren't going to come back, so it, they'd have to go up and then come back? Like it was like nobody were working hard for each other because they knew they weren't going to help them out. It was just like they were so disconnected to each other that nobody wanted to graft for the team. I just can't believe that they've put in that performance. This is. This, I feel like after that Huddersfield game, I can't believe that's what we've just watched them do at this point of the season. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, 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 re- I really struggle with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought we had Ipswich in Huddersfield off out of our system i i thought you know a, a terrible performance as what it was i thought there's no way we're not going to turn up against swansea and try and absolute do them all right that's unfortunate I t- let, I, you don't expect a lot away at middlesbrough let's just go at them because i i think a, a lot of people out there watching now and you you three guys here would all, would agree that if we get beat we get beat right that's football but we want to see some passion we want to see some desire we want to see some push and we want to see some big meaty challenges uh stevie i thought Johnson didn't have a, a great game again against Middlesbrough. I thought he, I thought he was pretty <clears> poor. I, I think Valentin's got Valentin's got potential. He, he's really come along leaps and bounds. Ironically, it was against Middlesbrough where I realised there was a player in there when we played him at, at Hillsborough uh, under the lights on a Friday night in the early part of the season. But um, but I, I, I but I, it, to come back to that original question, can players? like Volks and Bannon as a duo hold a centre midfield on their own against a team like Middlesbrough? Um, yeah. Do you know what? I think all things all things being equal, if they'd have turned up yesterday as a, as a unit and had performed as a unit, we were as good, if not better. We had enough to, to beat that 11 yesterday. I, I, I firmly believe that. Um, I just to, to sort of echo everything that Holly said. I, I just don't think we turned up, and I, I, I don't think there were enough. There was enough passion. I don't think there was enough heart. I don't think there was enough battle, um, and that was it. Uh, and I, I we, you know, people that have been watching this podcast for for, for any sort of length of time will know that whilst I'm, I can't profess to be any sort of standard of a coach, I've, I've coached football teams at a reasonable sort of level. If that's my team going in at half time, it's teacups thrown it's holes in the door it's absolutely everything because where's your art where's your passion and i get 2024 we've got to talk about the 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 modern way of sort of motivating footballers and everything else 
but at, at, at base level, if I'm 23rd in the league and there's an opportunity for me to be 19th in the league or 20th in the league, if I put in a performance and leave it all on the line, then I'm going to put in a performance and I'm going to leave it all on the line. And we didn't do that yesterday. And, you know, you, you, you mentioned Marvin, your, your sort of your, your, your monologue before you went into the question. Um, I've been a big proponent of Marvin Johnson over the last sort of six months. I thought he was poor uh, mm. yesterday. I thought he was really poor. He didn't look interested. Um, I don't think he was much better on Friday. And I think he, you know, in the grand scheme of things over the last 20 games, I think he's been top three. I really do. I think he's been top three in terms of player. And I'm worried because I, I, I don't know if this is a, a conscious thing that he's not asked or if, if, if it's just something a, a, a little dip. But we need him back to something like if we are going to be, you know, competing to get out of the hole that we're in at the moment. Especially with uh, with Ipswich at the top of the table, and that's the team that we're gonna that we're gonna make him skip a league into the Premier League. Looking at looking how well they've gone. Tell you what, Ollie, getting a bit annoyed at this. Uh, you're you're here to be laughed at in your silly accent, but everybody's agreeing with you uh, on the on the internet. So there was a point in the game where we lost possession, and four of our players stood on the halfway line with their hands on the hips and watched it like it were on telly, and let them <laughs> attack us. What? Four people standing and watching it happen. And I know, like, Bannon gave a penalty away, and I have argued about when he does his headless chicken running around thing. But mm -hmm. at that point, he was the only one. He was, he was, was I agree with you. He was absolutely, there, there is no reason for our diminutive, mercurial, wandered footer, you know, centre midfield battler being right back on the byline trying to head the defender out the way because that, that's his desire to win and that's his desire to fight. And I agree with you, Holly. He was the only player on that pitch in that moment that actually wanted to actually wanted to win the ball. And yeah, on I'm, Burnley, I'm, they should have asked for a corner instead of a penalty, then they'd have scored. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I effed it. Effed it, it right up. Uh, so, you know, I, I mean, Terry, have you got some closing thoughts to, uh, to take us out of this game? But, you know, I... It's now time for a three-minute match review. You're allowed to do that now before I uh, before I move on and ask the uh, and ask the question about whether we're staying up or not. Uh, I've I've got the league table graphic ready to go. Brace yourself, kids. <laughs> I mean, we've done about a three-minute match review. I think we've done it. We've done it to death. But I think you know, it's just one of them things. With I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that yesterday's game was brings a reaction as to what we got after Huddersfield. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as we've already mentioned, that was horrible. Walking away from that game was awful. Um, you know, we had the chance to go above them, weren't it, that, that game? And then we just, yeah, it, the capitulation, would, it was shocking. It just worries me, just really worries me that we've lost some heart and some desire to get what we need after Saturday. I hope, I seriously hope I'm wrong. Um, but when, you know... the there's just the I hate the word cohesion. Everybody uses it, but I'm going to have to. There was no cohesion in the game. No, no, there were nothing. Yeah, we were. You know, there were there were no team. There were no team. And Ollie, you're saying that the four players have stood waiting for waiting for something to happen. Hearing things like that, I mean, I, you know, I didn't see. It. I, I watched it on iPhone as well, Dan, and like, just it's so disheartening to hear that and that we're seeing that that's happening. And I'm not saying we're bigger than better than them. We're not. Uh, but when you when you hear that there's four, four four players just not putting everything in, you just go, why do I bother? We will keep going, you know. And you know, we sold out again at the weekend. We we do keep going. But it just when we're in this situation we're in, when we need everybody together, and again, I'll reference three four week ago, we were all together. Everybody's in it. There's all these comments about we're all heading in the right direction, and then all of a sudden it's just not there. And you think, please, please forget. Let's forget. Let's forget what happened on Monday and on Saturday. Turn up almost like a new team. We've got to. We've got to because QPR are fine. What minute, Terry? Terry, that was that was lovely. I kind of want to clip that and put some <laughs> triumphant music behind it, and then cut to Holly. And go. No, I just want to just stop putting their hands on the ribs. I, no. I, uh, I had to, I had to shoe on that in, Ollie. I'm sorry, because I got Dan say I just want Fudge to do Ollie's voice. That's what I'm here for. So I've got to give the fans what they want. <laughs> they can be, look, the players can be shit, and we accept that they have been 23rd all the way through this season, and they're not good enough. But there's no excuse to have no heart. There's no excuse to stand and watch it happen. You can't 
at this point of the season, and yeah, fair enough, a lot of them are out of contract. So at some point, it's going to get to, there's going to be a game this season where everybody gets on board and goes, do you know what? Maybe they don't give a crap anymore because it doesn't really matter. But I don't know if these players realise that the, with the season as it is on a knife edge, like October, November time, when we had Chisco, we were the Rotherham. Rotherham were on the horizon to us. Like we, I couldn't even see us getting another point. We were so bad. I couldn't see us scoring a goal. Every time we conceded, it were more than one goal. We were so bad. So to get in with a shout, they just have to put it in. They just have to dig deep for six more games. And then they'll be legendary for keeping us up from that position. To keep us up from where, how just how bad we were, they'll be legendary. But if they stand and watch and let it happen and all stand with their hands on the hips, they will go down as part of the worst team. We've scored less goals than Rotherham this season. So we are one of the worst teams in the championship. <laughs> and if they let it happen and we go down, then we are in that category with Rotherham. And with last time we got relegated and we were absolutely turd. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be like when we when we went down against Derby, where it was a winner takes all kind of last game of the season thing, like it was against Crystal Palace as well. We've not done well out of them because we never have the way the way it falls. We never have the draw, and they just draw, and then we go down because we've because we've got we've dropped it. As um, just while I've got you folks, so somebody got their phone near their computer. By the way, and my apologies to the people listening. Mine's up I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of. Uh, yeah, it might be mine. I'm just on a check. Oh, no, I'm in flight mode. It's definitely. It's probably Steve. It's probably Stevie. <laughs> Stevie, what's the uh, what's the interweb saying? Is uh, has anybody come out with anything that's uh, slightly positive? Um, yes, yes. Look how positive. Oh yeah. If you follow Tom, the stats guy on X, he always puts a positive spin on stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started mm -hmm. reading a little bit of what he was saying after Swansea and after this game. And he still somehow managed to pick at the scab and find like something. He's positive. young. He's enthusiastic. Me and Terry used to be like that before we started doing our yeah. respective media outlets. And um, and then it just becomes a noose around your neck. And all you do is just end up doing knob gags on the internet. Uh, what's Liam said? Three points to a must on Saturday or a fortune. I think we're done. I think I think Liam's right there. I I, I given the performances we've just done against uh, Swansea and against Middlesbrough, I'm actually concerned about QPR going forward. But I tell you what, we'll get the QPR. We'll do the um, do the match predictions in just a minute. Stevie, let me uh, let me show you this bad boy. It's not clear. It's not good reading. This is the bottom of the table. Uh, Blackburn can gain the bin. Uh, last week we did the relegation rival special and we all tipped Blackburn and Plymouth to go down. Uh, Plymouth's form is absolutely abject, but it looks like um, Neil Warnock might be going there because, let's be honest, he lives there and he knows all about it. And the, the, the appointment of him going to there at the end of the season is absolutely hand in hand. Um, Huddersfield still can't buy a win, but we've now not won a game in four, whereas, you know, when you go back the previous five, four of those five games were green. Now, Stevie, it's going to be a big ask, isn't it? Is, is all the, is your, I know you're a big fan. This is why I'm coming to you about it. You don't think that point <laughs> going is linear, I believe is the term that you use? Yeah, correct. Um, I think in the, you did a, a massive shout out, by the way, to the, for, for the relegation um, rival show that you did. Uh, I thought that was absolutely outstanding. Well done. Uh, <laughs> but if you look at the teams that we we, we had in, um, it was last week, wasn't it? The, the the teams that we had on, you know, you're looking at Stoke, you're looking at uh, Birmingham, we, we had QPR on there. You know, we had we, we had six of those people. If you look at that those um, those that that form guide, there's nobody that's running away with you know winning t winning games back to back to back other than QPR and in the bottom mm -hmm. nine, is it? All the way up to Sunderland in thirteenth. There's only one win per um, per team, bar QPR and Stoke. So, you know, yeah. I think I've, I've long said that it's as long as we're in touch, and the, in the grand scheme of things, if, if we're in touch when it comes to, I did say Easter, and we're getting to a point now where Easter's sort of it's been and gone. Uh, that was that was my sort of my, my checkout point. I do think we need something on Saturday. I'll admit that, but. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to catastrophize because I don't know what Huddersfield, Plymouth, Birmingham, Millwall, and Stoke are going to do um, on Saturday. The, 
the biggest ones there for me, Stevie, are Plymouth and Huddersfield. They've not got a win in five, and we've not got one in four. And I always use Black Blackpool in this situation. Blackpool were one of those teams that are the epitome of hitting a whether it be a relegation fight or a promotion fight, in form. Because when they got promoted to the Premier League, they were absolutely, they were nowhere. And then they just hit a, hit a vein of form, got a few wins under the belt, and ended up getting promoted to the Premier League. We're not in good form. Plymouth aren't in good form. Huddersfield aren't in good form. Something needs to change. And, you know, I, I just want to sit and watch a game of football where I'm not sat looking at what bloody Huddersfield or Stoke are doing. You know what I mean, Terry? What, what do you what do you think? I mean, I'll, I'll put it back up for you as well if you if you want. I, I mean, I, you, nobody's really mentioned Birmingham. I know they won they, they won yesterday, but they've gone through it. Obviously, look, they've lost four out of five. Um, I still think they're that. I think they'll slip. I genuinely think Birmingham will slip. Millwall are not pulling up any trees. By I know the, their comments from their manager after yesterday were um, less than complimentary of them. Um, the point about us being in it, you know, go back three, four months. We weren't in this position. We, did we? Did we think we'd get in this position? I'm not so sure. Many, many thought we would, um, but we are. We, we're in with a chance, um, and I'm, I'm relatively positive. I'm, I'm that way out. If, if as much, yeah, lowest goal scorers in the league, it's, and he's right. It is terrible. Um, but we're in with a chance, and whilever it's there, I've just got to stay positive because otherwise, what's the point of bloody going? What's the point of turning yeah. up and watching? Um, and, and that's it. We're all just gluttons for punishment, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're on about the, you're, you're talking about the out of contract players earlier, and I was thinking, can we just turn the clock back? And can't we have these eight? I think it's 18 out of contract. And I'm, I'm assuming that would probably count in with the first year pros and that sort of thing. So I think there's 18 altogether. Can we have them 18 all sort of? Embody soon to be out of contract Jermaine Johnson for the last few weeks because every I, time I, he was due <laughs> to be out of contract, he was absolutely on fire for last. Like I, I thought you were going to go Hugh with so. Atty New Hugh. I thought you were going to go with a New Hugh end of contract. No, form. Jermaine were the more one. He, he did it every bloody season for what felt like about six, but all in reality it was probably about two. But he did it all the time, and you know, you know, if they showed as much art as that, then. Well, we we are we are we're in with more than a chance. It's in our hands still. So, Jesus. Uh, all right, I, I, I'll give you. I, I tell you what, I'll come to you first, Holly, about about the QPR game. Uh, given the way those last two games have gone, and given that not any not anybody starting to pull away, bar an, an absolute turn of miracle, I'd be happy to come away with a one-all draw from uh, Loftus uh, Loftus Road next week. Really, you'd be happy. With a one-all draw, Honest, Millwall have I, got Huddersfield and Plymouth to play before. The yeah, they well. they, can, they can fight it out amongst themselves. If we can just pick up a point here and pick up a point there, like Stevie says, uh, picking points up is not linear. Um, I I feel like you know I feel like I, I take <laughs> no. a draw. What about you? No, no, I think we we've got away with it that we didn't win on Friday and we're still, uh, and everyone else sort of matched us. And then we've got away with it again, that we, we've we lost and we're still within touching distance. And it's not over till the fat lady sings, but she's done the warm warming up. Warming up. She's warming she's up. Already, she's done the... La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we need... I, I, I go all in or don't even bother. What's the point? We need to win. And I just... How long can you keep just treading water? We've only been out of the relegation zone in that Leeds game before Leeds scored and between the goals in the Swansea game when we were winning and before Swansea scored. In the yeah. whole season, that's the only time we've been out of the relegation uh, zone. Admit it. How many How many of you lot uh, screen-grabbed live score when we were out of <laughs> the relegation zone on <laughs> Friday? No, no. Go, go, go. <laughs> Absolutely. 100% did it. Yep, absolutely. But um, you're happy for us to stay in there an extra week if we only get a point. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, look, 40, 40 there. I agree with Ford Jolie if we would have beat Swansea. And, and I can't, you know, if we'd have beat Swansea, we'd, you know, we'd probably stay there. I'd take a point. And, and this, this point against QPR is massive because of the close proximity of the two clubs. The issue is that they've just won the last two and they're just about to hit their stride. They're not going down. <coughs> Elias Chair, since he got since he got done, seems to have been, uh, you know, a, an absolute world beater, given the way that 
the the random country in which he's been a wrong and in has, has their laws. I, you know, there's a lot, on there and all of a sudden he's he's absolutely mint. And I don't feel that uh, our defenders are going to have a great game against him because let's be honest, we only just beat him at Hillsborough with a it was a last minute goal or something, wasn't it? Um, I, I agree with you, Merrick. I think Blackburn are absolutely struggling. And uh, anything to get Venkis out of that club, that you know they have some chairman problems, that are very similar to what to what we do. But get your get your comments in, folks. I want to see your QPR predictions, Stevie. What about you? Um, I um, I'm kind of on your side, mate. To be honest with you, I, um, <laughs> QPR every every week in our chat, Ash will say it's must win, and that's where we fall out because it's not must win or it hasn't been must win because of everything else that's been going on. Um, at some so point, I, it's got to be a must win. At some point, it has. Do you know, do you know when it's going to, do you know when it's must win in all seriousness? Sunderland away. It'll be must win Sunderland away if we're two points away from the safety zone. That's yeah. when it's must win. And I, I know that sounds shitty and I know that sounds like I'm being a, you know, a protagonist an antagonist for, for everything that we're talking about tonight and i'm not you know it's it's not the narrative of a podcast but at the end of the day we can't legislate for what the teams are going to do and for me personally and i'll say this and it's going to be quite controversial i'd rather draw one all at qpr and then beat norwich at home or beat uh west brom at home because i think our home form and i've said this all the way through our home form is what's going to keep us up and I think if we can pick points upon the road, even if it is a one-all draw against the relegation rival, it's that game. The, the the games that we need to be looking at are Norwich, it's West Brom. We've got one more at home and I can't remember off the top of my head who it is. Um, those three games are going to be the ones that are, uh, that are going to sort of dictate whether or not we stay in the league. But West Brom are in playoffs, aren't they? We couldn't even beat Middlesbrough who, who finished their season's over. And you're thinking, well, we'll get a point against QPR, but we'll beat Norwich and West Brom. I tell you, I, but Oli, let, let, let's not forget, like, Blackburn out of absolutely nowhere have just gone to Sunderland and handed them their backside. This is football. And I think I said this, this is phrase every week. You know, if we knew how football went, I'd be a millionaire every week and all. My name would be John Skybet because I would absolutely own them. Why I changed my first name to John, I don't know. But, you know. <laughs> but just on, just on that point, though, when, when we play Blackburn and we beat Blackburn, Blackburn were flying. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's not without the realms of possibility. And you look at the teams that have beat us. We we we've been dicked by Millwall at home. But I thought for the first half, and I know it's a, we're we're talking about losses and people jump on the comments and go, yeah, but we lost and blah blah blah. I thought for forty five minutes against Leeds, we were very competitive at home. And I think our home form really is what what what's going to be the foundation for us either making a fist of it and and, and having a go or or not because. There have been some away games where we've been absolutely abject, and it's not about the the, the, the score result. Um, West Brom was a long evening because they scored after 15 minutes, and that was it. Short shot. shot. Uh, Huddersfield was long. You know, Mill uh, sorry, Millwall at home was awful. But the Ipswich away, God bless anybody that went to Ipswich. That was absolutely terrible. You know, you, you know so God, anything God bless our fans all up. season. God yeah. bless our fans they, all they, season. Yeah, and we haven't mentioned this, but they were they were absolutely. We went 2-0 down yesterday and, and the singing. I absolutely incredible. Absolutely the, brilliant. The weirdest bit was actually like uh, Terry will attest to this as well. Like there was a bit where we went 2-0 down. You could hear our fans for the remainder of the game. But and the commentators even yeah. kind of went, Is that us? That's not, you know, they, they were like, no. Is that one of our songs? No, it's not. That's them. No. And yeah. and I absolutely I, I was proud to death. Proud to death. Now uh, just just before I pass you, Terry, to uh, to give me your prediction on the way out, we've got Hank here who's, who's decided he's lost his mind and gone, Holly's talking facts. <laughs> Liam also <laughs> agreed that Holly was talking facts. Uh, we've also got 40 with massive fans. Now, Aisha, who's, who's listened to this show right from day one, uh, QPR isn't a must-win, but the players need to have a must-win attitude and play as if it is, which is something that I genuinely can't disagree with. I just want a performance. I just want to... I, I, you know what I've realised is that I can actually walk to this ground and walk back. Again. It's, you know, it's a ten-minute walk for me this ground, and uh, I want to. I want to just whistle off into the sunset and go. Well, at least he tried. At least he get it a go. Uh, <laughs> Terry QPR coming up. What do you reckon? I think that comment that you've just shown then is yeah, it's it's absolutely bang on. That we need a reaction. Um, naturally, of course, I want three points because three points could get us out of it. 
you know, we could be out of it by by five o'clock on Saturday. And then look how you know the the, the horizon, the sun will be shining in the horizon. And then um, I wouldn't cry if we drew. It's Stevie said, as home form's been the the thing that's kept us in it. I mean, how many games have we won away from home this year? What is it? Three? You know, it's not many, not many. is it? Let's be honest. Not many. Not it's, many. It's, it's it, it's not many. So I mean, if we can get something, then that's that's going to be a be a bonus. I want three. I want three. I, will we get it? That's another question. But I want three. You know, I don't care whether it's the worst game we've ever seen. I don't care if it's even worse than yesterday. If we arse one in in the 94th minute and it's the worst goal you've ever seen, bring it on. Let's have it. Let's arse one in. I'm a big fan of that, Terry. Again, I'm going to put some rousing music behind it. Everything you've said tonight, I'm just going to clip and just a fanfare of the common man playing in the background or like, you know, or something like that. Now, uh, breaking music news. On, mate. That'll work better. Uh, uh, you, you just winding me up now. Uh, we've got some breaking news. The Rumour Mill. Uh, it's also been, apparently it's been, uh, in one of the comments mentioned, I've not actually checked this out, which is why it's just a rumour apparently a Plymouth has released a statement saying it's not going to be Neil Warnock taking her through to the end of the season, which I, I find absolute insanity and I don't know uh, I don't know how that works. But uh, listen, we've got QPR away. Thanks a lot for joining us this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot to Holly and Stevie and Terry. It, it, it's been amazing and it's nice to have somebody else on here because, uh, you know, you're a lot prettier than Blair who is still stuck in the dog house. And uh, it's time now to say see you later. And well done to me because I didn't even say... This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. The trigger! What a goal! It's absolutely world-class from Marcus Tunde! Johnson puts it in the air. Aiden Fred wins the goal! It's still with Lee Gregory. He's in the box. Tries to screw him. Is it going to be there? Yeah!